。对。今天你很幸运，我们是有福分的。呃，第一句，我是太平人。我是太平人啊。Since they are so densely placed right next after each other, when one house catch fire, it easily goes to another, and those mato chang helps to prevent the fire. Good morning, YouTube. This is Yan. Welcome to my channel. It's the second season, Mainland China, and I will be traveling to every single provinces in Mainland China. And today I'm now in Guangdong, my hometown, and I'm going with my dad, who is in the car right now. We are going to his hometown in the southern part of Anhui. But first, we are going to visit one county called Jinxian. This is a county that is famous for two things. First. The Xuan paper, one of the very classical, very important paper in China, and also the Xuan brush, the writing brush that we used in Chinese calligraphy and Chinese paintings. It's the center area for the production of Xuan paper, and we've stopped here at the Jingxian Xuanzhi Chanyeyuan, the big market. Uh, it is generally believed that paper was invented in China by a guy called Cai Lun more than 2,000 years ago, and after that, Xuanzhou, someone from this place called Gongdan, learned this paper making technique from him, and then invented the Xuan paper. Xuan paper is very often used in Chinese calligraphy, in Chinese paintings, and it's very different from the normal papers. So let's go inside and have a look.可以啊。嗯，我就是现在拍一个视频，就是讲安徽的宣纸。所以把灯打开吧。嗯，好，谢谢你啊。嗯。你看这个温度都对了。我。我们的大学生们吗？不是，我是那个YouTube游玩拍
The technique of producing sham paper is different, like many craftsmen have their special secret recipes. But in this region, this is the main ingredient. And then plus the rice, sometimes they also use hemp, they also use the mulberry tree bark. So it really depends on who is making the sham paper. Oh, this is the writing brush. It's often made with bamboo and also on top it's either rabbit hair or the uh, wolf fur. So it's another big brush for calligraphy. And those are the hangers for the writing brush. After driving for another 20 kilometers here, we are at Zhongguo Xuanzhi Wenhuayuan. It's a museum of Shen paper making. And in this museum, you can see some of the procedures of the paper making process. There is even a Hui style courtyard in the middle of this museum. This process explains how Xuanzhi is made. It's very complicated. I'm not an expert on this, but from what I've read here, first of all, it's the process of pulping, which means that you collect the raw material, whether it's the tree bark or the rice, and then you process it, you dry it, uh, you boil it, and through so many complicated process, finally, you get this clean fabric. The next process is called felting up the pulp. The world's largest shen paper is 11 meter long, 3.3 meter wide. It is made here in this workshop. This is a big pool. Look at this, it's huge. So unfortunately, no one is performing this for us today, but I've watched it over the video. First of all, they're pouring this pulp into this big pool and then they're going to stir this pulp with the bamboo stick and then they will pull that curtain, that huge curtain and it's so thin as if you can see through it so they're going to remove the curtain here and then dip it inside this pool and then all those tiny tiny fabric will stay on the surface we'll remove the curtain and peel off that same layer of paper so this whole process is way more complicated than what i can describe and to make one paper like that over 50 person have to work together at the same time it's just an incredibly amount of work this is the curtain you can see it's almost transparent so in this room, it is where they make the curtains for paper making. And this curtain was made of small bamboos that looks like needles and waved in a loop like this, like a carpet. We call the process of making paper from the pulp as fishing the paper. Um. 
And this is a place where they trim the paper. So that one single paper cost 14, more than 14,000 yuan. That is about $2,000. I think it's not only the largest paper, but also the most expensive paper in the world. Dad and I, we decided to stay one night in Taiping Fu. Oh, we had a very nice home with two beds and we paid less than $20 for that. We paid about 120 yuan and Dad is... Uh... How are you doing? In the river south area, we don't have the heating, so normally every family has a kind of a, uh, how can I say, a stove or an oven. Mostly in the past, it's like a wooden bucket. You put some coals or some burning wood inside. This feels like paradise in the morning because my dad. <laughs> so we are going to sit on this warm fireplace and eat our dumpling. Mansa. <laughs> they are talking in their local dialect and I don't understand at all. <laughs> So I'm asking them to show us their dialect. Lobba.我讲一句,我讲一句普通话,你讲一句那个当地的话,行不行?可以啊。第一句,我是太平人。啊,是太平人。欢迎来安徽。欢迎来安徽。欢迎来中国。欢迎来中国。今天的早餐很好吃谢谢你啊哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈
The soil is very good for the tea trees. There is always enough rainfall. It's foggy and moisturing all year round. And also there is enough sunshine, but not too much sunshine. The water quality is really good. Look at that, how crystal clean is the water. So in this region produces some of China's best quality green tea. driving bypassing the Huangshan Civic Area or the Yellow Mountain Civic Area. It's the most beautiful and also the most famous attraction in my province. You can see some part of the mountains over there. It's, there is some snow up there. But unfortunately, we're not going to visit Huangshan this time because both dad and me, we've been there many, many times. But as someone from Anhui, I can tell you, I'm so proud of it. I can say that it's the most beautiful mountain in China. So if you're coming to China and if you're coming to visit Anhui, I highly recommend you to visit this place. This is the entrance area of the Huangshan Scenic Zones and before, maybe 20 years ago, this was just a small town and now as tourism developed, this whole area is so urbanized. There are so many different traditional Chinese villages in southern part of Anhui, in Yixian, Xioning, in Shexian, Huangshan, and this is one of them. Its name is called Ta Chuan. We're not going inside because we're going to Hongchun, Hongchun very soon. But here I want to fly my drones together with my dad so that you can have a great view of this beautiful area. I've just got the ticket, it's 104 yuan, which is something around $15. So um, it's not that cheap because it's a 5 a it's one of the highest rating of scenic zones in China. Hongtun is one of the largest and also the best preserved traditional Anhui dwellings here in this area. There are altogether more than 140 traditional dwellings. Hui architecture has certain characters. First of all, it's Bai Chang Hei Wai. The wall is whitewashed, whereas the roof is black, made of black or dark gray tiles. And secondly, there is one element. That is this Ma Tou Chang, this roof, it's like staircases. So that was designed to, to prevent the fire from spreading because the houses they are made of wood and it's really easy to catch a fire. And since they are so densely placed right next after each other, when one house catch a fire, it easily goes to another. And those Ma Tou Chang helps to prevent the fire from spreading. The design, the planning of Hongchun follows Chinese feng shui theory. So three sides are surrounded by small hills and one side facing water. 
When they construct this village, they hired feng shui masters, and also the shape of the village is like a buffalo. All those stone buildings, the buildings, they are the main body of the buffalo. And in the middle, a small water pool. This is the stomach of the buffalo. The water channels in this village, they are the intestine of the buffalo. And to the south, there's another pool. That's the belly of the buffalo. So there is a lot of science inside. There is a network of water channels in Hongzun. It connects almost every house in Hongzun. First of all, it's a place where people get drinking water. It's a place where they wash their clothes, wash dishes, wash food. And also, it's a natural fire distinguisher system. When the buildings get fire, people can get water directly from in front of their house. One thing I found very interesting about China is like everyone is so crazy about social media no matter how old they are so those are the people who are doing online streaming in the scenic area with the background of this beautiful Hongzun Oh, I'm again hungry and I want to get some of those sweet potatoes, dried sweet potatoes. It's all homemade. I believe the potatoes are grown by themselves as well. <laughs> Thank you. During Ming and Qing dynasty, Huizhou region enjoyed a high degree of prosperity. Many of them work either in the government as high officials or as merchants, and they trade salt, which is monopolized by the government. And this house belonged to the richest people in Hongzun, and he is a salt merchant. This house is called Cheng Zhi Tang, and it was built in Qing Dynasty back about 200 years ago. It covers the area of more than 2,000 square meters. It's huge, with a room number of more than 20. So this is the entrance area, look at this. I'm going inside and explain to you a little bit about this house so that you can know the social structure during that time. This side room belongs to the manager of this family. So a manager in the past is someone who manages all the big and small things in the family, the money, and therefore there is a small pool. And because in Chinese culture, water comes in when there is a streamlined water it means that it can bring in fortune and wealth and that's why he lives in this side room that's a beautiful stone carving and this area is called Jialang so in the past the Chinese people like people who have a high social status they don't walk by themselves they were carried away by other people in a small kiosk and this is a place where the kiosk stop they park the kiosk and get out and then start working walking into the house this is a main hall of the house it's a bit like the traditional courtyard in northern part of china but it's relatively smaller and much taller in the middle of this hall, there is a water bucket. It's called Ju Pao Pen. So in Chinese, it is symbolized the collection of wells. When it rains, from the top, water was collected in this bucket. And also, there is another important function for fireproof because all this building is made of wood. And in hot summer, when it catches fire, this is the first thing that can be used. And also, there are more interesting things about this room. That's the entrance of the house. And in the past, only when you have a certain level of social status. In Chinese, it's called guanzhi wu ping, which means when you reach official number, 
level number five, you are allowed to enter from the middle. Otherwise, you have to go through the side way. Or even more, if you are the service person, you have to enter the room from the side door. This area is almost totally forbidden. Besides, there are two tables. They are half the size of a round table. And this was because when the man of the family works outside doing business, it means that this family is not reunion yet. They are separated and therefore they put two half of the table on both sides. And when the man comes back, they put the table together. It symbolizes reunion. To the side of this room, there are two bedrooms. And in the past, the bedrooms are often very, very small. This was because it is believed that human beings, we all have energy. And when the space is small, it's good for the energies to stay together. But if the room is too big, then your energy will, will go away. And it's not a good thing. But in the center area, it's a meeting area for the guests. And then it has to be spacious. So that's part of the Chinese culture. There is always a meaning behind every small item. But there are so much interesting stories behind all the Asian dwellings in Hongchun. So when you visit this area, you really need a tour guide because what I have just said is only less than 1% of the whole story. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoy watching it. And if you're interested in China, please keep an eye on my channel because I'm going to travel into every province in mainland China. Thanks for watching and see you next time.